glad we are together again. Tell somebody I'm happy you are seated by me. And because as you are seated by me, it means you are in the land of the living. Hallelujah. I thought you are clapping for life. God says those who are outside and they are not nursing mothers, they should just come and they are busy inside. So please, if you are outside and you are not a nursing mother, please find yourself inside for us. Amen. I am in the Ghana flag. Somebody will be wondering, uh, Pastor, no pay here. But I feel like we must make intercession for the country. Are you here? We are believers, sound men. I'm not feeling myself. We are believers, and I, I, I don't want to scream too much. You help me. And we have to be watchmen over the country and the cities. And Abraham engaged God when God, the angels were on their way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He engaged God. We cannot be part of the destroyers. We cannot be regular radio callers, administration members who call to destroy and speak anyhow. And most of them who call in and speak cannot even run their own lives. Are you here? And sometimes in the spirit of deception, we join the queue. I'm not NDC, I'm not NDC. I'm a Ghanaian. You hear? And if anything happens to Ghana, we can have church. And some of us sit down and we easily talk about coup. Do you know coup? Do, do you know coup? Do you know what it means to suspend constitution? It means your driver's license won't work. Your passport won't work. Your privacy at home doesn't work. Your salaries don't, there's nowhere to go to work. Do you know who? And there will be cold and then, do you, do you know who? We have to know the power we have as Christians and the power of our words. You may be NDC, I don't care. You may be MPP, I don't care. Because if you people come to power, cry, you don't bring me money. So you don't mind. Do, do you understand me? I don't live from your pocket. But I'm thinking about Ghana. And we have to be praying for the nation that the spirit of violence will not erupt on the land. And you and I must not fuel violence. We must watch and pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Ghana. You don't know. How many of you have heard gunshots before? Real. Like behind your house. Let me see. You never, have you forgotten about it? You don't know. Hey, that's joking. That's joking. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Hey. Hey. Pa, pa, pa. You let them give a warning shot by you. It will enter your bones. Eh? Hey. Oh, sorry. I, cool, cool. Mm. I pray that we will watch over this city and take it from the hands of violence. For Ghana, you might not have voted for the president. That's not what I'm talking about. Pray that there will be peace. The peace we enjoy should continue. Because no matter how wise you are, you can never prosper in violence. If even you don't have anything to eat and you have a place to sleep, it's a blessing. Yes. There was war in one country. They cut the hands of the young men. Cut. Rape women. I'm telling you, maybe you don't know. They'll be cool, they'll be cool. I want you to close your eyes and let's pray for the country. Pray, lift your voice and pray for peace. 
pray for wisdom for leadership. Pray for the MPs. Pray for the president. Pray for the vice. Pray for committees, financial committees. Pray for every sector of the nation. Pray for the executive. Pray for the legislature. Pray for the judiciary. Pray. Lift your voice and pray for the security apparatuses of the nation. We are praying for the SEPs. We pray for fire service. We pray for police. We pray for the military. We pray, oh God, for the Navy. Mahasun Tabahatas. We pray for wisdom. We pray for the peace of Ghana. Oh, lift your voice and pray. Pray that the country will continue to prosper, to increase. That increase will locate us. Violence will be far away from the four corners of the nation. We plead the blood over the nation. We plead the blood of Jesus over the nation. We decree and we declare that as the rains are about to come, we bind calamity, we bind catastrophes, we bind tragedies. Death soon will not happen again. We bind the spirit of death. We bind the spirit of chaos. We bind the spirit of destruction. We pray in the name of Jesus. Thunders and lightnings will not kill the innocent. In the name of Jesus. Communities will not be destroyed. We pray that Lord, the prosperity of this nation will manifest in the name of Jesus. No matter what, no matter what, we pray for Ghana. We dip the coat of arms into the blood of Jesus. We lift the flag of the nation and we dip it into the blood. We lift up the government and we dip them in the blood. We pray in the name of Jesus that the voice of violence will be silent on the land. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the, the, the beast, the demons of violence, of war, will not land in our land. In the name of Jesus, we forbid the enemy. Somebody pray for two more minutes. We forbid the enemy. Let the sword of destruction not rest upon the nation. In the name of Jesus, we pray that Lord, the rays of glory will rest upon the nation. The power of the Almighty. Shagadaya Bakola Bataba. Wherever there is famine in this nation, we pray. We stand as righteous men. Men bought of the blood. Men saved. We stand in the blood and we decree and declare. Let the blessings of Elohim rest upon the nation. In the name of Jesus, our children will not disappear. In the mighty name of Jesus, our young ladies will not be used for blood money. We pray, oh God, let such wickedness come to an end. Let there be improvements. Let there be increase. Let the educational sector see an improvement. Let the power sector see an improvement. Let agriculture see an improvement. We pray in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not take the youth. The enemy will not take the young and young to perpetuate violence. In the name of Jesus, we pray that Lord, the hand of the Lord will rest upon Ghana. Let our roads be saved. Let the motorway be saved. Zagadaya. Let the spirit that destroys, let the spirit of corruption not increase its wings on the nation. In the name of Jesus. Kayapala Kataba Katoa. Bless the president. Bless the vice. Bless every MP. Bless.
bless them with wisdom and the understanding of the times. We make intercession for the nation. Every sound of destruction, every sound of violence approaching Ghana, we decree and we declare let that voice be silent forever in the name of Jesus. We are the salt of the earth. Because of the church, the nation will be preserved. In Jesus' name we are praying. And everybody shall shout a big amen. Shout a big amen. Shout a big amen. Shout a big amen. Yesu, why am I on the scene? In the sit in your room and you wonder that is this Ghana? Because the grass will be green again. Give the Lord a mighty clap of him. I am one of the people who believe in Ghana. If you give me a permanent stay in the U.S., I won't go. I'm telling you. I love Ghana. I love Ghana. I love our food. I love the freedom. There are some countries you can't pray at the park. There are some countries you can't go to church. Today I watched Ben and him. I shared it on my page and was praying for some people. And they said they were missionaries from India to Texas. They were missionaries from India to Texas. It used to be U.S. sending missionaries to India. But now, Missionaries are coming from India to Texas. A day will come. Ghanaian churches will send aid to American churches. We will export pastors from Ghana to pastor. Yeah, it is that started. A huge church in America sold, gave up their property to Salvation Army Church in Nigeria at a cost of either one dollar or ten dollars. So I believe in Ghana. One day, 
understanding, Ghana will truly be the epitome of excellence and governance. I believe. Yeah. Sometimes it's disheartening when you look at how things are going. But have faith in God. And keep practicing God's word. Dare into new areas. Because if you have good people having money and power and influence, many things can change. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to construct a road in one year, rain falls, it carries it. You are like, what? These are people with masters in this and that and that. By a day is coming where a lot of things in the nation will work for our own benefit. Amen. I want you to clap again and give God praise. I have to preach a very powerful message. I, I normally don't preach in this line because I'm not so much a philosopher. And I'm not a motivational speaker. And I hardly preach to make people happy. So I avoid certain topics. But uh, for the necessity of the time and the hour, so at this point, I want to wish everybody happy Valentine. Oh, I say happy Valentine. Oh. Can somebody say thank you? Wish me to a happy Valentine. Hey. I see they don't like I am mother, so. <laughs> and so the hour tomorrow we are not doing any Valentine campaign here. We are going to Booster Calvary Temple. Is to not Anaba is there, pouring fire, oil, water to stay us up. We have to boost our faith. So. Don't go and hide behind the little kiosk tomorrow. Don't go and hide in the hotel somewhere. We are going to Calvary Temple. Tell somebody we're going to Calvary Temple. <laughs> Don't go and hide in some corner be. Wear hats, spectacles, hide cooler. We will catch you. We are going to Calvary Temple for Booster Revenue School is ministering. This morning, this evening, Monday evening, and Tuesday evening. Let's go and drink, and drink, and drink, and drink. You can't separate your life from God. It's dangerous. So, I'm preaching something that is mixed. Read. We have, it's going to talk about marriage, family, and relationships. Amen. I started powerfully. Those of you who didn't listen to the first service message. It's actually the foundation of this message. So I will encourage you that when you go home, listen to that message. It will give you a better ground to understand what I'm preaching. I'm preaching this based on serious studies, serious observation, and great promptings in the spirit to talk about this. As a church, after 10 years, the face of the church has changed. A lot of young couples, a lot of young parents, a, a lot of people aspiring to marry. Some are near marriage. This year, so far, we cleared how many? Four. Next month, we clear one. April, we clear three. So, more marriages. It's a face of the church. And every local church is unique. In that God sends a message for the church per time. That is why you must pay attention to God through the eye of your local church. Because God knows us and he knows what you should feed us at what time. What they will preach at Christ's temple, I cannot preach here. Because Christ's temple is 30, 8 years. As long as I see it. Are you here? So, what excites a nursing mother does not excite an old mother. The life of a pregnant woman is not the same as the life of a nursing mother. The same way the life of the nursing mother is not the same as the life of a mother whose children are working. 
the life, the nursing mother cannot expect money from a child. So are you here? So this message is really, I believe, is for the church. And I pray that you open your heart and receive it. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. I wish I step a little in the press and come out. But if I do that, I will delay too much. So I will see when I pull some and come. So I'm preaching on the subject, the healthy family. The healthy family. That clap is not good at all. The healthy family. It's unfortunate I can't go back. But go and listen. I beg you. If I go back, we'll close like two. So go and listen careful so that I can shoot from here. The healthy family. Every single human being belongs to a family. You came into the world through a family. Nobody dropped from the skies. Nobody was manufactured from a factory. Every one of us was born through a family and we came with a family name. I am Prince Lloyd Nanayal Nyako. It means that I'm from the Nyako family. You are Lucy Abochi by virtue of your marriage. So everything that happens, anything essential about your life is tied to your to family. So now, by virtue of marriage, you are not just an Aloka daughter, but you have now also become an Abuchi's daughter. So you did not just marry your husband, you got connected to his father, his grandfather, his auntie, his grand auntie. Are you following me? That is why marriage must not just be entered into. You must watch and you must pray in order to select. I'm not talking about that. Every society that will work will be as a reason of functioning families. The family is the building block of every society and every community. A community that is violent, a community that is chaotic, a community that is full of crime and full of wickedness. Check the families in that community. They are not healthy. And unfortunately, the 21st century church is gradually taking up a picture that looks like very dysfunctioning Christian families emerging too fast in the church. Our families are not healthy. So I told them in the first service, the reason we struggle to be church members. The reason you struggle to be a church member, a consistent church member, a good church member, an effective church member, a church member who is a pillar, a church member who is consistent, and a church member who is healthy is because our families are not healthy. Our relationships within our families are full of distrust, are full of jealousy, are full of envy, and then as long as we don't allow the word of God to work on us, for us to look like Christ, we transport that character into the church. Am I preaching? So some of us here, we are not talking to our mothers. We are not talking to our fathers. We are not talking to our brothers. We avoid our cousins. We don't have any connection with our families. Christ did not come to destroy the family story. Christ did not come to say, I'm calling you. Ecclesia means I've called you out. So don't have any relationship. No. In the first service, I proved it. 
that Christ was a family man. He went to church with his family. Are you here? At the point he was performing his first miracle, he was there with his mother. And in fact, his mother was the key reason why the miracle happened. At the point on the cross, whilst Jesus was crucified, his mother was there. And when he was about to give up the ghost, he turns to John and he says, John, I'm going. Take care of my mother. So, where is this thing that says that if you are born again, run away from your family? So I quoted another scripture that said, Jesus himself said, if you don't hate your father, if you don't hate your mother, if you don't hate your brethren, if you don't hate your wife, if you don't hate yourself, you cannot be my disciple. So people turn it and say, Jesus does not love family. If you are spiritual, you must not have a family connection. Oh, I know your DNA has changed. You are having the DNA of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But hey, your natural family is still strong in you. Are you here? Hello, are you here? You still have a strong connection with your family. The diseases that attack your body is because it runs in your family. The way you talk, your attitude, your look, your thinking pattern is still your family. Even the way you dress is family. Somebody said, Jesus said, when the young man said the father was dead, Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. So Jesus, when you are born again, you must not have a, a, a military man does not entangle himself with civilian affairs. No. What he was saying is that He's not saying hate in that way. You know, the way you see. No. What he's saying is that the love you have for me must be greater than any other love you have for any other person. How can a husband not love the wife? So Jesus said, I hate your wife. It's not that hate. If you look at the word, it's not the kind of hate you are thinking. He's just saying that love because he, the Bible also says, husbands do what? Love your wife. So, Jesus can never counter his word. What he's saying is that the love you have for me must be greater than the love you have for your wife. And until that happens, you are not yet a disciple. So, I've cleared that argument. That if you become, so, I, 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 you see, there are some men in this house. You, you, are, you are forfeiting your role as husbands, as wives, as fathers, as mothers. I am a pastor. But those who have seen my private life small, there is a picture of me that will be in your mind. I'm a family man. I love I don't know town. When you say I should come somewhere, I'll use Google Map and I'll get lost. Because you hear from work to church to house. The best place I want to be in terms of my natural self is to be in the house. I'm happy. Birthday, I'm at home. It's nice to be home. There is no atmosphere as safe as the family atmosphere. Unfortunately, the enemy has attacked the marriage vows. See, the enemy comes after the vow. Because vows are powerful. And the vow is that to death do us part, not to divorce part us. So the vow is not based on divorce. You could be divorced and still have a covenant with your ex. So if you can get the vow, he has gotten access into the marriage. And when he gets access into the marriage, he will easily destroy the structure of family. 
So go and listen. This is was in the first service. There was another one. I said, if I go, I won't finish. You see that it's a nice message. And I told them that motherhood is natural. Fatherhood is not natural. Fatherhood is not natural. Francis, if you have gotten your wife pregnant outside marriage, you will not be responsible like how you are now. Yeah. That's why many, they have hit and run fathers. But you don't have hit and run mothers. Because motherhood is natural. And parenting is a God plan. Father and mother coming together to raise a family. As single mothers, as single parents, it's not easy. And most of us are victims of these things. You see a man raised by the mother alone. He enters into a a marriage and he can have a lot of excesses. By the time he's refined, it can take 15 years, 20 years. Because he didn't have a father who will add the hard part to his upbringing. We have to begin to think about healthy families. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. Give the Lord a clap of hands. All happy families are similar. All happy families are similar. All unhealthy families are similar. What am I trying to say? There are characteristics that run through happy families. And the church must desire to have happy families. Most of us are from families that there's no happiness. It should be a motivation for us to produce families that are filled with happiness. Most of us are from chaotic families. Even you have to fight to belong to this church. You have to fight somebody to be a Christian. Chaotic families like the house of Jesse. He eliminated his own son because his mother is different from the mother of the rest. Some of us are stepchildren. Some of us are step this and step that. And you, you stayed with step parents and you knew how it was. Why do you want to produce a child outside the bond of marriage? And I told them that fatherhood is encouraged by the society, by the church, by families through the bond of marriage. Yes. So I'm preaching the message to the ladies. I'm preaching it to you. I told you it's the Valentine, so this is your Valentine message. As you are sitting here, they sent you location already. I bombed that location with fire. When you enter the hotel, may the key to the door get missing. May I send an angel. When you lock, the key will get missing. You are paying for the hotel bill. Instead of thousand, you would type hundred thousand. And the hotel will tell you money received does not return. Something makes families beautiful. 
who has visited a family that you desire that your family could be like this? Let me see. Oh, let me see. Yeah, it's real. They are, hey, they are beautiful families. So. It's just nice. Like you just be when you visit them, and you now have to act like if you are from a good family. And you live and you are asking yourself questions. I can cry, my love. Ah. They are good family to Johanna. Happy family. You wonder. They never quarrel. They never fight. So every child has a car. Every child has a room. Like they, they eat at table with their father and mother. You eat with your father. Even when he's eating and you go for the meat. And there are families where the daughter will go and cover the eye of the father and take the chicken and chew. They say, oh, then the, and then the, the father will say, is that all you take? Your own. Over the womb. have bad families in Ghana. And may the Lord begin to restore us. May the Lord begin to restore us. May the Lord begin to restore us. God is not the author of confusion and chaos. So if he had the plan of a family, look, haven't you realized before Cain came, Adam and Eve had to marry. Before Cain came, Marriage was mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Then in Genesis 4, 1, going, came, came. It is not, it's not usual. It's not okay. It's not Christian to have children outside marriage. It's not usual. It is becoming too usual. So the more an error becomes usual, the more what we call satanic strongholds become stronger in our lives. The more we, what is an error becomes usual, we allow Satan to have strongholds. So, my, my Christian sisters, it's not normal to get pregnant outside marriage. Take it from me. Oh, pastor, so if I get pregnant outside marriage, so I will name the child because the child will not follow your foolishness. The child is innocent. He doesn't know anything. So, you see that I've named children like that. And I go and name it joyfully. I pray for them. But it's not normal, Emma. You are planning to do some stuff. I don't know why I came to stand here. Yeah. It's not normal. I will name the child. I've named a lot. But it's not normal. It's not okay. It's not scriptural. It's not Christian. No wonder families are dysfunctional in the church. May the Lord help us all. Am I preaching to you? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. God is not the author of confusion. If therefore 33, 33, 33, 33. For God is not the author of confusion but of peace. God wants peaceful families. Since the family is God's idea, he wants peaceful families, prospering families. If your grandfather was a poor man, your father was a poor man, your uncles are poor people. I, if your grandfather was a womanizer, your father is a womanizer, your uncles are womanizer. Hey! The generation will continue. But it is now at our doorsteps. With Christ, we must change the narrative. 
Why do we come to your family house and we see all your aunties? They are all divorced. All your aunties. They never got married. They have children. And they are all in family house. It's a sign for you to sit up as a Christian because the force in that family will, will try to pull you. We must have healthy families. And God gave us family. He doesn't intend for it to be chaotic. Listen to me, someone. There is no perfect family. Write it down. Anywhere. There is no perfect family. Don't be deceived. There is no perfect marriage. Don't ever be deceived. Let's stop the pretense. There is no perfect marriage. No. On the earth, there is none. Every marriage has flaws. Every family has flaws. There is a bat on every family. So if you have a bat in your family, don't curse your family because there is no perfect family anywhere under the sun. There's none. From Adam to Eve. To Cain. Abraham and Sarah. The father of faith. The father of many nations. He flawed by sleeping with his house girl. His wife was barren. Even with the prophetic word and seriously working with God, it took 25 years. Please, am I talking to someone? Oh, Jesus, I pray that your eyes will be open in today's message. Jacob and his wife, Rachel, Ria, or Raya, or Rachel, or Ria, or where? Was barren. For God knows how many years. Isaac, the same. Your family problem is not unique to you, there are problems in every marriage and every family. Are you here? Lot. And his daughters. It's not a perfect family. If you know the story. Noah. And he, the man who built the ark to save the world. He got drunk to a point where he had to be dragged and covered. But through him, God made the covenant. And the rainbow was manufactured. Am I preaching to someone? There is no perfect marriage. There is no perfect family. And therefore, there is no perfect church. Yeah. And every pastor has his calling. So you see that me, I don't, I'm not good with preaching with entrepreneurship. My, my, I, I, I can't. So you hear me preach about that means my sorry, I'm my baby now. Five levels of management. One. Because you can learn everything to teach. So I can go and learn five levels of management or leadership. Number one, being a manager. You know, being a manager, I can come and teach that. But it's not my strong suit. There are topics you give to me when I wake up and say, Pastor, go and preach. I won't open Bible. It's here. So every church is unique. But you don't need to preach about healing for people to be healed. But, uh, Paul was speaking about salvation, Holy Ghost baptism to Cornelius. Or Peter was talking about Holy Ghost baptism to Cornelius. And then he, the power of God healed. He was, he was preaching about Holy Ghost baptism and salvation 
and then the Holy Spirit fell. He was not doing impartation service. So, I, I may be preaching on holiness, but God will be giving you a business. God is the word of God. That is why the Bible says, comparing yourself and measuring yourself against yourself, you are not wise. Because I, the word, you can be preaching. Why would they go and do crusade? Preaching about salvation and cripples are walking. Your father may be a drunkard. Receive him as your father. The place is quiet. Because I did not, this message is not Holy Ghost. It's very close to you. So we feel it. It's good. David, a Bathsheba. You think he's a perfect family? David killed Bezibah's husband and took Bezibah as wife. That is the David that God says that I have found a man worthy of you. Tell someone, I am not perfect. Tell the next person, I am not perfect. And tell the next, you are not perfect. Oh, you can't tell the person. Point is, tell you are not perfect. Give the Lord a clap offering someone. When God created the world, he made everything good. Find it in Genesis chapter 1 verse three, uh, 31. He saw that everything he has done was good. So why don't we have good families? Why don't every marriage become good? Because it got corrupted by the disobedience of Adam and Eve. And everything got corrupted. But Christ came to give access authority and power to us to restore everything the enemy has destroyed and distorted back to its original state. So Christ is dead, giving us resurrected gave us the authority, the exousia, to be able to enter into places that have been corrupted. That is why you have the power to call dry bones to become life. Because whatever was corrupted, the authority of Christ has given us the access to restore back to factory setting. Everything the enemy corrupted. So I pray that your marriage will work. No matter the number of marriages that has failed in our families, we will begin a new story. Our marriages will work. If you're a husband and you are very spiritual, you claim you are spiritual, and you cannot take care of your wife, love her, take care of the children, you are not spiritual, you are religious. Ego is eating you. Me, I can't change. If you can't take me like this, be there. I can't change. And you can't change me. <laughs> Listen to you. You can't change me. Nobody. My mother crack could not change. Are you married to your mother? Did your mother make a vow with you on the altar? And you are, I, my mother could not change me. My father could not change me. You cannot come from your family to come and change me. We kill our marriages by ego. You can change. Pay attention to your character. Because human relationship is based on character, behavior, attitude. Attitude. Your best friend is your best friend because you like his or her attitude towards you. Every human being can become your best friend if we all build and pay attention to our attitudes. I thought you are clapping. Lord Jesus. So in families, this abnormality which came from the disobedience of Adam and Eve 
can reflect as conflict, chaos, violence, divorces, break, break, um, breaking of relationships, strange happenings. You see, mother in laws who are Christians hating their daughter in laws. Wow. So, where is your Christianity? You see, we have to start practicing Christ and stop wearing the cloak of Christian and I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by grace. Please, who has been saved by hard work? Stop, stop disturbing us. We all came to Christ by grace. We know. But when you enter into Christ, grace must empower you to become more like Christ in your behavior. So when you are a brother-in-law and you are rude to your brother's wife and you are a Christian and your brother's wife is not a Christian, how can she become a Christian? We need healthy families. Am I preaching to you? But there is hope for our families again. Yeah. Our families will work again. To work again. I said it to work again. When your family is working, do you know that poverty can leave your family by family business? But your family is not working. So when you open a business, you bring your food to your relatives, you need to spread. They don't come to work early. They don't work hard. Because we have a wrong perception. It is my wife's job. I can come anytime. But you know Coca-Cola is a family business. Puma is a family business. Look at this fight. He built wild houses for his two sisters. Who wouldn't love a brother like him? Who? Your own your own brother. Like Joseph's brother. Brothers. They were going to kill him. No wonder they say Joseph is from Africa. We have a big problem. You don't talk to your brothers, your cousins, but on your wedding, the way your marriage is coming, you have become the nicest cousin in the family. Damn, Pacho, me hoye. Damn, Pacho. Have you wondered why on the important periods of your family, of your life, it's your family that comes in? When they gave birth to you, your family named you. When you're going to marry, your family gave you. When you die, your spouse does not have even the power to determine how you should be married. The law says, give the body to the family. Thank you, Jesus. We call our mothers witches just because they place more demand on your money. Explanation is the solution. Ma, I don't have money. Yes, don't call her a witch. It's painful to call your mother. One day, my mom was in the church. And the pastor and the elders called my mom a witch. Hi. You can imagine your pastor. Oh, I called the pastor. I gave it to him direct. I gave it to him. When I finished, I asked for forgiveness. Hmm. Me, my mom, a witch. For which reason your wife cannot give birth? My mom, a witch. <laughs> what I did to the pastor, I didn't let him say when. Twenty minutes, non-stop. <laughs> when I finished, I cut the call and I off my phone. The next day, he sends a message, man of God. I am sorry. And I said, me too. 
The Lord, the clap of me, Samuel. The gospel is all about redemption. It's not about it. You see, redemption is not isolation. If you have opportunity, go for fast, uh, family functions. Go. If you have opportunity, go. You would need your family. Our families are for us who are building new families. Especially the young mothers. A lot of 21st century young mothers are very careless. Are very careless. In bringing them. They are not mothering. Yet they make the account. And I hate the yeah, yeah, be, be, be. Your mother is a face. Pay attention to your children. Don't put your career before your child. Don't even put ministry before your child. Don't. So last two weeks when I was teaching the uh, church workers meeting and then I got the message about you. I, 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 that is why I ended the teaching, but you don't know. I ended and left two people with guest pastor and I went there because ministry is about people. If you are not doing religion, you are doing service to humanity. You have to understand that at the end of the day, when you go to work, even your best friend at work, you go home. You too, you go home. Everybody will tire home. You know why there are many drunk, drunken point, drinking points, pubs popping up everywhere? Because people don't want to go home. When they close, they go and do sitting. See? Because they don't want to go home and stay with their quarrelsome wife. The Bible says it's better to stay in the corner of the roof than to stay in the house with your quarrelsome wife. And I told them the psalmist did not finish. It, and I also said that it is better to sleep in the lion's den than to go home and stay with an egoistic man. What are the characteristics of healthy families? Number one, the big picture. They have the big picture in mind. The father has a big picture in mind. The mother has a big picture in mind. The wife has the bigger picture in mind. The husband has the bigger picture. In every situation, they don't think about themselves. They don't think about what will make them happy. But they look at the bigger picture. The people involved. The children. They think about the success of the marriage. They think about the success of the family. The bigger picture. And I, I heard of an MP who goes to families and then help one person to travel. So that when they go, when they make it, they come for the rest and take care of the family. Yes. Bigger picture. If you leave your family, if you leave, you break that marriage, what will become of your children? I told you one day my mom was about to leave to Germany to study nursing. And she was using education to leave the marriage. And we were very young. Very young. Nine years, eight years. A visa was in, ticket was in, pocket money, full scholarship. I remember that night she was crying. That I said, Mom, why? She said, I cannot go. I have taken the decision to stay because of you. I won't go. And she never went. Maybe that is why I'm here. Because where we were staying, Matayoku. That was where I saw homosexual small boys. When you are doing 24th night, when mommy and papa, mama and papa, they were doing homosexual. Just imagine she had left and gone with a disciplinary system. 
where we now are going. When you want to build a healthy family, always think about the bigger picture in every action you take. Give the Lord a mighty clap of it. When Jesus was in Gethsemane praying, Lord, let this cup pass over me. Let this, you know, it was a family issue. Father, let this cup, it was a family issue. It was father, son, and then the other brothers and sisters, those who come, who come and join because of his death. But when he prayed, I got to think, God, not my will, but yours. Bigger picture. Have a bigger picture in mind. Number two, commitment. Healthy families are deadly committed to each other. There's a particular tribe in Ghana. I just love them. They watch out for each other. And there is another one. Do the overture. I didn't mention names. You are mentioning it in your head. The Lord bless you. They are committed to the tax of marriage and family and parenting. Don't let us have irresponsible parents in this house. As, 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 especially when children start coming in. When children start coming in, eh, you have to sacrifice everything for the child. He didn't ask you to burn him. I don't know how to say it. He didn't ask you to bring them to the world. You can't sacrifice them for your pleasure. Children are formed very early. You don't show them love early, they won't show you love in your old age. You will die painfully. Especially sons. They will show you. <laughs> your big tongues won't matter. But you will remember the past. Hey, children, be committed to the welfare of your child. Because that is what we see in healthy families, happy families. Be committed. Parent together. Let's not do what we saw our parents do. They left it all for the mother. And they just came in to beat us and go. But we parent together. Let's show commitment. What investment are you having for your kids? You have a lot for yourself. What do you have for your kids? What training are you, what are you committed to building to? If you're having a daughter, are, are you sure you have, when I, I, I heard somebody say it, I don't know who said it. I listened to something, I forgot it. He said, when you are raising your daughter, raise them to be number one, obedient daughters to you, and number two, good wives to somebody's son. So as you are raising your daughter, are you are you sure that the daughter you are going to give in marriage, you know, it is not like you are offloading stress from your life. <laughs> be committed. Tell somebody, be committed to building a healthy family. Number three, you see, love goes beyond Moses. <laughs> you will soon realize when you marry and you settle, and there's eyes, eyes, obi and re obi. You know, when you marry first, everybody will watch. And you, 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 will, you think that as you are walking, everybody is watching you. So even if you are cautious, but very soon, eh? Nobody see you. <laughs> Number three, high regard. There is a spirit of high regard in the family. Father has a high regard for mother. Husband has a high regard for his wife. There's mutual respect, honor, care, concern among family members. And parents must learn to respect their children. Hmm. That is why you visit that nice family and you're happy. The parents, they respect the children. They don't lie to the children. lie to your children, you will have a happy marriage or a happy family. Don't lie to them. Then guard the woman. Respect your words to them and keep it. 
But you can only keep your words to them if you respect the conscience and the views of them. If you don't respect their views, you will never chat with them. But I'm telling you, when you chat with your child, you will see things and you will know things. Yes. Have a high regard for family members. Amen. I remember one night, Abraham came to knock the door. And I went out. I went out. Then he said, Daddy, my stomach is killing me. <laughs> and I knew that they've given me medicine already the night before. But the way he said it, boy, tearing down the way, come, 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 let's go and sit in the hall. So we sat in the hall, and I'm like, you see, we finished supper. We went to the fridge. We poured one glass of cranberry juice and drank all. Now you see who's suffering. Me, I'm not suffering. You are suffering. So go to the loo and come. So we went and came. I said to the loo, come. No, but the glass can. Yes. Are you feeling better? Yes. I said, I said, but me, I'm fine. Me, I'm fine. You. So next time when mommy and daddy talk to you, listen. Why do you go and drink cranberry? You lock your watch here. You went to the fridge and you drank all your cranberry. Will you do that again? No. So go back to the loop. He went back to him. So he feels better. And I said, okay, let me pray for you. Pray for him. Put him to the room. He slept in there. No medicine. If you don't have time, straight to the fridge. Take, take, take. Go and sleep. That's what you do. You know, I've caught you. Take, 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 and go and sleep. <laughs> because what? I let your eyes heavy. Like, I still say, what's sorry, two o'clock. <laughs> Number four, flexibility and grace. Let there be flexibility at home. No family can survive in a healthy manner when there is no flexibility and blend. Let there be strictness, kakra, and then love, kakra, flexibility, like active and balance. Don't be too nice to your children. Let them be balanced, be flexible. Allow them to make mistakes and correct them. Not always by cake, but by word. Dialogue with them. I was with LP, we went to the schools, the children's school. And I think that a woman had come to pay the fees of the daughter. We were just watching. As for pastors, we are on duty 24 hours. Every three weeks is a message. So we watch and we pick message. So the daughter was disturbing the mother, like pulling her dress and asking too much questions and wants to go to the class. But the woman wanted to keep the mother, the, the girl around her. If it was some of us, we would beat like this. No, you did so, the lady was holding a receipt. And then she gave it to the daughter that the daughter should read. The daughter said, Mama, I can't read. I, I can't. She said, no, but you can, you can read the alphabet. So, read the alphabet. And the mother did it like this. While she was translating it, account, and she was reading. By the time she finishes reading, the mother had finished what she was doing. And they were together. Sometimes poverty can let us beat our children unnecessarily. <laughs> you will not be a poor father. You will not be a poor mother. You will not be a poor husband. You will not be a poor wife. Shall I receive the blessing of wealth? Oh, you can clap. Let grace, forgiveness, and the sense of safety be in your home. Okay? Because of time number five, the balance. Let there be balance. Don't just raise them to be obedient, but raise them by encouraging their unique characters. Two children are never the same. And don't force one to be like the other. I see it in my sons. They are all different. 
and I don't wish they will become the same. I need them like that. I need a hard one. I need a soft one. And I need a holy one. They will have to because the hard one will be able to drive in the night from here to Kukumase and come back. Don't force them. One will be intelligent. Than, one will be much intelligent than the rest. Don't, don't compare. Allow them to grow their character by guiding them with the word of the Lord. Because Abraham is not like Noah. And Noah is not like David. And David is not like Paul. And Paul is not like Peter. That's why you must not compare your pastor with any other pastor. I am not that pastor. I am me. Do you understand? That's why you must not compare your wife with another person's wife. Characters differ. But we don't promote evil character. But we promote other characters that are good. Thank you. I'm not preaching that. Number six, joy and humor. Do you laugh in your family? <laughs> there are some families you can't crack joke with your father. <laughs> Francis, I've got him. <laughs> Back of an issue with the epilolo. You are finished. <laughs> you are finished. <laughs> oh, daddy, I wanted to play with you, so I put it here. Have you found it? I've given you five minutes. Let me find it. <laughs> You see, our families, our families are sick. Let me move you up with your belt. Why am I your spirit to leave you? Is there humor in your family? Do you crack jokes with your children? Now, my sons, they just laugh at me. They join together and they laugh at me. They will be laughing now. Your family can be nice if you want it. Let joy and humor be in the home. Let joy and humor be. Don't turn your house into a military camp. Those days are over. If you do that, you will have fake virgins at home and criminals on campus. Criminals, prostitutes on campus. When they come home, yes, ma'am. I've been on campus, so I know. Criminals! When they come home, they'll be in their room. The guys playing gospel. We are coming from the throne of glory again. <laughs> My son is becoming special. Go share your campus. If you turn your house, there's no freedom, there is no joy, there is no sense of humor. So I like when I preach, you can never say you won't laugh. I'll make you laugh because the church is the place to laugh and make ourselves happy in God's presence. We can't go to club. We go club down. I don't know how it is like. I feel like if I enter there, they will kill me. I see the club like hell that souls there must be pulled out. Not that I go and join them. But you, when you are going, you see your brothers and sisters there. You know the bouncer. Like instead of paying 10, you give him 5. Chala, na, na, cha, 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 na, ya, na, na, ya. Time is running. Number seven, a service mindset. A service mindset. I just sit and be watching just five families. Just, just be watching them. The sons are working for him. Beautiful. Beautiful. Don't be jealous. Don't be envious. If it was your father, you will work there. Bread. 
build your family. Let our families be healthy. It's possible. Abraham's blessing landed on Isaac. Isaac, he landed on Jacob. No family is perfect. But the family can be healthy. The blessing never left the family. It needed. And he ran till he got to Jesus. Check the genealogy of Jesus. Even prostitutes are there. You know what I want to do? I'm running through 12 things very fast in five minutes. So I've told you the characteristics. I'm going to show you what you should be doing to produce a healthy family. If I don't tell you, I didn't finish. Number one. This is based on Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. So things that you should be doing. He said, finally, brethren, whatsoever are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are are just whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. So what I'm going to tell you, they are of good report. You practice it, you will begin to see that flow of character I've shown you. Number one, number one, pray together as a couple. Pray together as a couple. I used to pray a lot with my wife, but I stopped small. I'm going back. When I wrote it and I realized that, hey, this one is for me. We used to pray together time that we will eat. And I'm going back. So the, the message is for me. Pray together. Pray more together. Spend time together and pray. Number two, participate in a local church together. Be involved with local church. Serve together. It builds a spiritual atmosphere at home. It shows your children the way to raise a new standard. Number three, perform daily acts of kindness. Perform daily acts of kindness in the family. Perform daily acts of kindness. Be kind to each other in the family. So you can't start straight in your extended family. Start in your nuclear family. Be kind-hearted. Help each other. Be kind. Help your children. Help your spouse. Be kind at it. You can spill it over to your extended family. But let it be rich in your nuclear family. Because you cannot save the world if you do not save your home. So, right in the corner where you are. So, show kindness. Be kind to your wife. Learn to open the door for her. Not only when in the wedding night you are opening the door into the hotel room. Then you open. No. Let it be a culture. Open the door. Like she's sweeping under the chair. Go and lift it. Don't be on your bed reading traffic. Chapter one. Your wife is pounding for food. And you are in the room doing what? What's happening? She's pounding. Wicked man. Wicked man. It's in your den. Somebody's daughter. Oh, yeah, cha cha. Oh, yeah, cha cha. Okay, you can't help her pound. Buy her fufu making machine. You see, we have a lot of problems. We learn from our parents that are rubbish. You take somebody like a pastor to look at you and say, change your life. Your wife has said it. I mean it. I am telling you, it's a bad character. wife goes to market and comes and she has to upload from the car. And what are you doing? You are in the house. Watching Manchester and what? Liverpool and what? Please. Young men, young women marrying, make us proud. Don't follow these discourse. Be 
wickedness. Wickedness. I'm instructing my home so I'm comfortable because when it gets pretty, I'm speaking to you. It's not nice. Meanwhile, if your in-laws were visiting, you would not let your wife pound the fufu. You give a fake picture or share or whatever. It's a mere thing. After this, we come and pray big tongues. This is an eleven tongue. <laughs> Number four. Learn the language of your spouse. Learn the language. Learn the language. Learn the language of your spouse. The Bible says the two of you should submit to each other. So learn the language of your spouse. There are different languages in every marriage. Learn your own. Number five, eat dinner together. That is something I'm also going to practice. Now I'm going to do more. Eat dinner together. Learn to serve dinner with food and sit together with your children and eat together. Practice it intentionally. Do it over it. Put off your phone. Don't watch telly. Eat together. Chat together. It's a powerful thing. That's what you went to see in that family and you were happy. You were hiding in the room. You opened the chat. They were always good. Practice it. It will work. Tell somebody it will work. Number six, be actively involved with your children's education. Don't leave it for one. Be actively involved. Do the homework with them. It gives them confidence. Sometimes if you have you drop them at the school, share the responsibility. They are your children. If they become great, is you that will be introducing them to everybody. May may ba papa so jani niyo. May ba doctor ni niyo. Oh yeah, I say no real school or 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 master or or career masters for Manchester ba. Oh oh university or the first the whole university. Look at you. But when they were doing the assignment, you did. You are not part of it. You don't. You you buy dresses for yourself. And you don't even run extra classes for them. Pay and be involved. Don't just give money. I don't know what has come on us. We think that when we give the money, the money is emotional. The money will be, no, 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 no. Be involved. Be involved. You see that your children will tell you things. You know how these schools have become. Some of them the, some of the teachers are homosexuals and all that. If they are touching your son, how will you know? If the teacher is bullying your child, how will you know? If your child is not understanding something, how will you know? Be involved. Tell somebody be involved. Know your kids, friends, and if possible, where they stay and their parents. Know your children's friends. Know them. Ask them questions. Sometimes I ask them, hey, my nana, who is your best friend in the family? Which lady is your best friend? Then he doesn't want to say. Then Papa Paul say, Daddy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Even on Katetia. Say, who is your best lady in your class? <laughs> hey God, I've been a pray for yourself, so. Something interesting happened. I told you it's a family thing I'm doing. Forgive me about the time, but these informations are helping you than I'm producing. So one time, um, Elpi interacted with one of them, and then he discovered that Obenbon calls a friend his boss. If you don't interact with them, how would you know? Say, say boss. Ken is my boss. This one is my boss. Boss. So he found out and realized that every day 
the guy brings money for cow, then he gives him some, and they go and buy sausage together. So, if the guy has a bad attitude, he can easily initiate the boy. So, when I got to know, I called him, I said, Pastor, ah. So, what money can't I give? Christmas, I bought you this. You go to KFC. They give, have you asked me for money? I didn't give you. No, but you give. See, so he didn't have asked. So, how am I giving him the video? One Ghana, one Ghana. Hey, one Ghana, one Ghana. <laughs> because of one Ghana, I'm calling somebody your boss. <laughs> so, I started. Every day, I would give him one Ghana. Then, at a point, I'll be said, Yes, I'll be said. And I said, then I'll give you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it will shock you that now I hardly give it to him. And he hardly takes any money for anything. You have to. You have to pay attention to him. Number nine. Number eight. Get inside each of your wells. Get to know your wife's wells. Get to know your husband's wells. Get to know the children's wells. Don't be an alien. Number nine, give the benefit of doubt to every scenario. Always have a positive mindset about an issue involving your spouse. Don't always think about the negative. I know, I know my husband. Oh, shut up, man. It's me and your husband. Have a positive mindset. The benefit of the doubt. The benefit of the doubt. There are times we all go off, but have a benefit. The benefit of the doubt. Please, do you understand that one? That's the, the benefit of the doubt. Number 10. So I can go out 11 p.m. or help you have to walk up or check up, or I have not even checked. Say, how is the house? I don't come home and see her frown. Eh? You even went out. You have not even checked. Some of you do that. Stop that. You didn't even check home. You didn't even check. How is it? The benefit of the doubt. You should rather ask him, what happened to you? Are you okay? Are you? Now you, you are sitting there. Oh, you are sitting there. You come to my 2 a.m., then you are angry. Number 10, play together. Husbands and wives play together. Don't just coin a near together, but play together. Do you play with your wife? Do you play with your husband? Do you play with the children? Or you are CEO at home? CEO! The food ready. Okay. See you. That's why they sat you from your home right here. Play with your children. Play with your spouse. Have fun. Have argument. Debate. Watch a game together. Watch Animal Kingdom. Watch cartoons together. Argue with your children. As for this one, I'll pass. I'll do it. We train together. Thank God they are men. We train together. So my children are averagely stronger than children in their age. They are strong. Don't try them. They are much more star. Because that's the game we play. We train. They can take blows on their hand. Blows that you to shock you. Because they are hard. I don't want tall sons. Sons. Amen. And my 11, give praise and show love and affection at home. Number 12, build faith in your home. Faith. So show affection, stop criticism, stop complaining. Show more. Praise them. Praise each other. Praise your wife. Praise your husband. Praise your children. Let them be talk. Tell your children you love them. There are some children when you tell them you love them, they'll be looking at you. Uh, 
Yeah, Jackson Jr. said, I love you. And say that. Tell your children you love them. Tell your spouse you love them. Repeat it. Repeat it. Tell them, I like your food. I like your dress. Don't change this dress. Wear it the whole day. Though you come back from church, wear it. It's for me. You took it to church. Everybody said you're looking beautiful. This one, wear it till 6 p.m. I want to see you inside. Share. So you be like that. Be like that. When they tell you, oh, dear, dear, me, I'm tired. That thing is hot. <laughs> Allow yourself to be loved. Allow yourself. Give the Lord a clap. Defense, look at that. It's a strong look at that. Yeah, we are both saying, you know, hey, we say suit. They say, me feel it free, kakra, Edian. Wear it for me. I want to see you in it. In fact, your makeup, it has gone. Go and do it again and come. Yeah, because your face is for me. <laughs> Why do you think the Muslim women cover their face? Nobody should see even the hair. Now we are not legalistic, so Obia should, hey, this is your hair is nice. If you have a jealous husband, then you throw him back. Close your eyes and let's pray. Please rise up. Let's pray in two minutes. I want us to rise and pray. I want you to pray for your family. Pray that the balm of healing, the balm of Gilead, the oil of healing, restoration will visit our family. Lift your voice and pray. Pray in two minutes. Pray. Lift your two hands. Pray for your uncles. Pray for your aunties. Pray for your mother. Pray for your father. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your children. Pray for your marriage. If you are not even married, pray and sow a seed of prayer into that marriage. Pray. Pray that Lord restore. Pray for your wife. Pray for your children. Pray. We pray for joy. We pray for happiness. We pray for abundance. We pray for restoration. Restore marriages, restore marriages. Heal our families, Lord. Rabba Baba Kadaya. Iyandala Baba Baba Sobala Daraba. Atola Bakatala Mamama. Impala Gatala Bakopalaya. Yepalaleba. Every dysfunctioning family, Lord. We pray that you visit. We bind the spirit of Absalom. We bind the spirit of Jesse. In the name of Jesus. We pray for stable marriages. We pray for stable families. Responsible fathers, responsible mothers. Wisdom to run our homes. By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. And by knowledge, these rooms are filled with the treasures of this world. I pray for wisdom to build homes, to enter into this house. In the name of Jesus, I pray for understanding that we will dwell together in unity. That the blessings of the Lord will be commanded. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So go go Yeah yeah Run away If I were you my two hands would be lifted as we sing this song So so go go So go go Paris then
pray for every family here going through challenges, every marriage going through challenges. I pray the wisdom to navigate it back to the place God purpose. I pray for understanding. I pray that our carnality will not destroy what God is doing. I pray that God will raise us as new ancestors in our families. That wherever family members fail, we will succeed. And as we mingle with them, may salvation enter into our families. May Christ be one on us. May we speak Christ. May we take Christ. May we walk Christ. And above all, as we walk with the Lord, may the Lord handpick us and show us forth as epitome of his glory. May we never bury our own children. May we have enough to make our parents happy. May we have enough to help our siblings. May we have enough to give the best of education to our children. May we have enough that we will give to the house of the Lord as families. And I pray that God will not depart from our homes and our lives and our marriages. That we will not trade God for anything. But the faith in Christ, we will grow it. Our children will grow in it. They will not depart from the faith in Christ. They will grow Christians and they will live Christians. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God a clap offering someone.